Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Q4 FY24 earnings conference call of Tata Consumer Products Limited, hosted by ICICI Securities. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Manoj Menon from ICICI Securities. Thank you and over to you, sir. Hi, everyone. Uh, as always, uh, it's our absolute pleasure at ICICI Securities to host the results conference call of uh, Tata Consumer Products. Uh, a wonderful good morning, good afternoon, good evening to you, depending on the part of the world you're joining from. Uh, now, handing over the call to Nidhi Verma from the management for the introduction and for further proceedings. Thank you. Thank you, Manoj. Thanks for hosting us. Uh, welcome, everyone, to the Q4 and FY24 conference call for Tata Consumer. I am joined by uh, Mr. Sunil D'Souza, Managing Director and CEO, Mr. Ashish Goenka, Group CFO, and Mr. Ajit Krishnakumar, Executive Director and COO. I hope you have had the time to go through the materials that we put out yesterday. But as we usually do, we'll spend about 10 to 15 minutes going through the key performance highlights of the quarter and the year, and then open the floor for Q&A. Uh, I just want to draw your attention to the disclaimer statement, which is on your screen right now. With that, I will hand it over to Sunil. Thanks, Nidhi. Uh, so if I walk you through the executive summary, overall our top line was up by 9% in constant currency 8. India beverages flat volumes but revenue grew 3. India foods continued strong trajectory including capital foods was up 20 if I exclude capital foods 11. Like for like volume growth and this is primarily driven by salt was 4%. International business 7% uh, revenue growth, 5% in constant currency. Most importantly significantly improved profitability. During the year, <coughs> consolidated revenue up 10, 9% uh, in constant currency. India beverages volume up 2, revenue up 7. India foods uh, like for like is 15, uh, including acquisitions was 18, uh, with a 5% like for like volume growth. International business was up 9%, 5% in constant currency. Uh, the big uh, upside uh, or big bright spot for us is that the India growth businesses continued their strong trajectory growing 40% in FY24 accounting for 18% of India business up from 15 last year. We had a strong improvement in overall profitability consolidated EBITDA growth of 24 and margin expansion 170 BIPs to 15.3. On a MAT basis the India business business saw uh, marginal share loss. That said, quarter on quarter we are seeing stability slash improvement. Salt shares are up to close to 40% right now. Just to recap, uh, when the merger happened we were at a 30%. Uh, they improved by 50 bips on a MAT basis. Uh, innovation to sales ratio up from 3.4 to 5.1. I would say uh, towards the top quartile of the industry now. Front end and back end integration for capital foods was completed within 60 days. We had always set out a target of full integration in 100. We are on track for that. Transaction for Organic India closed on 16th April, which is this quarter. And therefore, you will not see the numbers for uh, organic foods in the last quarter numbers. And again, the target for integration is also 100 days in the case of Organic India as well. Uh, we continued our good work on networking capital. The India core business is down to zero. Overall, as a company, we are down by 8 days versus last year down to 27 this year. Uh, India, including all the other businesses, apart from tea and salt, we had a net working capital of 4 days. Uh, in terms of uh, performance uh, for the quarter, uh, I talked about uh, zero volume growth and 3% revenue for India beverages. India foods leaving out capital foods was 4 volume and 11 revenue uh, including capital foods and just as a perspective capital foods was only February and March was 5 volume and 20 revenue. Uh, US coffee volume growth of 6 and uh, revenue growth of 3. Uh, international tea broadly flat minus 1% volume and 9% revenue growth. 
and non branded had a 4% uh, revenue growth overall 3927 crores and growing 9% uh, for the full year uh, 15000 crores uh, growth across revenue growth across all segments excepting for us coffee where we have seen significant volatility in coffee prices and we moved our numbers up and down uh, on the shop floors as coffee prices have moved uh, double digit uh, revenue growth of 10% in constant currency it is 9 uh, in terms of group performance 9% revenue 22% EBITDA before exceptionals PBT of 12 uh, before exceptionals group net of 46 we had uh, exceptional items of 200 plus crores this quarter because of which the reported group net profit is negative 27 we have used a significant amount of cash for the acquisitions uh, in India and therefore net cash while we've been constantly showing you close to 3000 crores on the books is now down to 118 crores. Uh, in terms of the full year 10% revenue, 24% EBITDA, 24% PBT, 29% group net and because of the exceptionals apart from this quarter about 200 if you remember we had some significant numbers last quarter primarily the UK pension numbers which uh, therefore the group net uh, reported is negative 8 uh, against the strategic priorities uh, we have now we are still almost there still not fully uh, there we are implementing a split route implementation in all million plus population towns and a significant amount of half a million plus population towns we are going with three routes just as a perspective broadly it is beverages plus organic it is salt plus sampan and uh, yum side and it is soulful plus uh, capital foods uh, we are significant gap on distribution was in the lower pop strata and we have had a huge focus on adding distributors in all 50,000 plus towns we have added roughly 1300 distributors in the last year uh, in our urban markets and now we are focused on building a super stockist sub distributor network to reach less than 50,000 population towns we are now at 1.6 million direct reach reaching 4 million outlets uh, very strong performance in the what I call channels of tomorrow modern trade and e-commerce uh, between the two they contribute to 25% of contribution now to our business we've had a significant number of new SKUs on shelf soulful because it is available in modern trade has seen a significant growth of 65 percent and we have seen a significant improvement in our premium salt salience in e-commerce which just led, lends credence to the fact that we now need to expand the distribution of this uh, portfolio uh, India business overall uh, we continue to uh, add to brand building our ANP spends were up 16 uh, percent versus FY23 uh, salt market share was up by 50 bips overall I talked about the softness on uh, T market share negative 50 the only point I would like to make is uh, while overall Nielsen does show a 7% uh, growth in the T business uh, we strongly feel that we have not lost market share and therefore we would wait for competitive numbers to see where this pans out uh, we have upped our innovation engine and effectively we have launched one launch every week of the year uh, our innovation to sales ratio is now 5.1 as I mentioned it is uh, we are in the top quartile of the FMCG space in India at least uh, and we have added uh, products across all the three big uh, verticals that we were looking at convenience health and wellness and premiumization uh, we've had a significant uh, step jump in digital transformation we are in the midst of uh, rolling out our new distributor management system and Salesforce app uh, this is built on the Salesforce platform it is not an out of the box solution and therefore a very very customized but very adaptable platform for us uh, to enable decision making at the front line apart from that we've digitized a significant por portion of our back end including procurement and logistics uh, we had committed to simplify synergize and scale our businesses we finished the uh, merger of Tata coffee during the quarter first of January was when it became effective uh, we've announced the amalgamation of all our subsidiaries in India that will bring another round of synergies and simplification 
and uh, we have already on track on our international simplification and a part of that has already started flowing through into our pnl as uh, we walk you through it uh, growth businesses we had said the target was 20% of our businesses growing at 30% and with the new acquisitions uh, we are on track for 30% of our business growing at 30% in india for the full year we have delivered 40% growth from our growth businesses uh, we are walking the talk on sustainability we already put out our fy26 numbers out there and across all different items uh, we are making progress now in 4 years of tcpl effectively the india branded business has delivered a cagr of 16 international 5 overall a 12% uh, revenue growth translating into a 15% ebitda growth and a 27% group net profit uh, and we've unlocked efficiencies our working capital is roughly half of where we started off india has made significant progress international will continue to make progress eps is up significantly from 5 to 12.3 a cagr of 26% operating cash flow is now 101% of ebitda and total shareholder return in the last 4 years is roughly 400% in terms of the macros tea costs broadly benign coffee again a bit of volatility with robusta leading the charge moving up and arabica moving up in tandem uh, we need to stay very close to this uh, especially for our us business in terms of business performance uh, overall revenue for india packaged beverages up to for the year uh, we grew with 2% volume growth revenue up 3 a four year cagr of the beverage business is 9% uh, the significant part is now two thirds of our portfolio is in the mass premium to premium segments uh, coffee grew strongly uh, 29% growth for the year accelerating to 45 for the quarter uh important is also that we continued our leadership uh, market leadership in the e-com channel uh just another perspective i think we have not alluded to it earlier we have incubated a vending business and now the vending business has crossed the 1000 machine milestone india foods like for like revenue growth of 11 volume growth of 4 and overall revenue growth of 20 salt has hit a 40% market share Uh, Tata Sampan uh, finished on a strong note with a 42% year-on-year -year growth in Q4. Uh, Soulful Group 42. Uh, Narishko had a slightly subdued quarter given the delayed onset of summer. Uh, just as a perspective, in many parts of the country, summer is determined. The onset of summer is determined not by the temperature outside, but the onset of Holi. Holi was about 20 days late this year, and uh we are seeing strong traction in the business now uh, so uh, overall narishko grew 13% uh, for the quarter with 204 crores of revenue uh, we had guided for uh, close to 900 to 1000 crores of uh, top line for the year but we ended up with 825 but we re remain bullish on the business because of two or three big regions we have almost grown 50% in outlets last year that will stand us in good stead innovation continues to be a strong engine there at a 20% innovation to sales ratio and we have augmented capacity and distribution to prepare for the season in this year non branded business you will see a consolidation of the non branded business into the tcpl pnl for this quarter uh, overall plantations revenue was down uh, but that is primarily because uh, we had a bit of uh, uh, how do i say a pause in sales while we did name changes from uh tata coffee to tata consumer so auctions and overseas customers uh we had a bit of a hiccup therefore there is an inventory sitting in uh, the businesses rather than getting translated into sales which should get corrected very quickly but solubles revenue grew uh, at the 19% and revenue grew of uh, 4 uh tata starbucks uh, while they had i would say a subdued quarter given the overall trends that we are seeing in the qsr business uh we saw uh Febr march better than february and uh, april better than march so we see a, a better trend right now but we remain focus on the larger india opportunity we opened roughly 95 stores uh, we are in 61 cities 
uh, revenue of 1200 crores targeting 1000 stores by FY28. Uh, our international business uh, was a star performer for this quarter. Uh, overall UK revenue growth of 11, uh, we are at a 20% market share in everyday black and strategically we needed to grow our market share in fruit and herbal. We are now at a 9%. UK delivered a very strong EBIT performance as well. The US revenue growth was up to our market share in, is in the ballpark. Canada continues to be the star uh, with 9% revenue growth and a 28% overall market share. This quarter, uh, we've always maintained that the role of the international business is accretive EBIT margins compared to the overall business. In this quarter, the international has delivered to that level. <coughs> uh, I'll ask Ashish to walk you through the financials quickly. Thank you, Sunil. Uh, just turning to financials, uh, key highlights. Our standalone revenue grew at 13% for the quarter and consolidated revenue grew 9. Just to point out that standalone now includes our coffee soluble business and the base has been restated to that effect. Uh, EBITDA growth of 8% on standalone and 22% for the consolidated numbers. On a full year basis, uh, uh, standalone revenue growth was 11%, consolidated came in at 10%, EBITDA growth of 15% and 25% respectively. On consolidated financials, while you have seen the numbers and Sunil talked about it, I just want to point out on two specific items. One is exceptional items. Uh, they are largely attributed to stamp duty on the Tata coffee merger and provision on, on prudence taken on some of the underutilized assets across our entity and fair valuation loss of on, a, on a financial instrument as part of our annual review process. The other is on tax. Uh, as you would all know that we've been restructuring our, uh, you know, structure, corporate structure in the US and bulk of it is now complete and therefore we have taken a one time gain of close to 92 crores in the tax line and therefore the ETR for the quarter uh, looks uh, at a lower level. Uh, and with that, I think I would hand over uh, back to Nidhi for questions. Thank you. Thank you, Ashi. So we can now go to the Q&A queue now and we will take the questions from the webinar after that. Thank you very much ma'am. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask questions may press star and one on their touchstone phone. If you wish to withdraw yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use only handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Ladies and gentlemen, in order to ensure that the management will be able to address questions from all participants in the conference, please limit your questions to two per participant. Should you have a follow-up question, please see join the queue. Thank you. The first question is from the line of Abneesh Roy from Nuwama. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks and uh, congrats on uh, international margins and innovation. Uh, my first question is on Capital Foods and Organic India. I understand Organic India will be coming in FY25 numbers, but what do you have to understand from inventory in the pipeline? Uh, how is it? Because initial part of the any &E, M&A, we do see that inventory is there, higher uh, channel selling is there. So when I see your numbers uh, in in uh, first two months, uh, that leads to a 532 crore annual revenue versus uh, 705 crore revenue in FY23. In media interaction, you said for capital food, you expect double digit. So this double digit is for 705 crore of a number or it's from a more uh, uh, FI24 kind of a run rate. So if you could give clarity on both capital foods and on organic India, how should we build in the FI25 numbers? Uh, so so let, let, let me take that. Uh, a, uh, you're absolutely right. When there is transitions, there are adjustments of inventory, etc. because uh, remember, they had a multi-layered system. They had a set of uh, super stockists, sub-distributors, etc. Uh, so, Avnish, we've, uh, in the integration, we've flattened the structure, uh, integrated. So, we've taken about 200 distributors from their side. The balance we've integrated with our systems. That's number one. Number two, we've reached to almost 95% uh, uh, of our distributors have already built capital foods and we are on our way. 
uh, we are basing our numbers of growth on uh, the 705 to 750 sort of number and we will work off that base. We are not working on the 500 odd base because we know it is uh, underpegged. Uh, we remain extremely confident of uh, our ability to drive the top line given what we are seeing on secondary sales, that's number one. Number two, what we are seeing the response to our uh, integration in the international markets as well. Uh, for example, in the US we moved from four distributors to 13 distributors because of their strong uh, 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 connections. A, B, I think the innovation pipeline is very strong and Ajay being there continued with us giving us the history and what he's seeing in the future of the business helps uh, actively. Uh, in addition, as I said, uh, the most important thing to drive at the front line is all our million plus and half a million, significant number of half a million plus uh, cities. We've got three, three salesmen at the front end now with one salesman focusing ex uh, exclusively on capital pools and soul pool, primarily because there is a lot of commonality in the product throughput A and B, the type of outlets that they will address. And this will apply even for Organic India, right, in terms of the growth numbers? Yeah, Organic India, uh, we just finished in uh, on the 16th of April, we are still working through all the details. Uh, again, there were only 24,000 outlets, so I mean there is a significant amount of uh, uh, headroom to grow out there. Uh, again, we will, re we will, we are targeting growth on the, I would I say, normalized run rates for these businesses had they continued alone and it's not on the short term adjustments that we will have to do. So my second and uh, last question is on uh, Narishko. So you have done exceedingly well past few years on Narishko and uh, you have also given I think in the media interaction a growth uh, expectation of around 30% in FI25. So I want to understand here uh, what are the products or the brand, uh, sub brands here which are uh, doing really well and in terms of distribution synergy is it now largely done in terms of your total universe so is, is a good penetration already there uh, and second related question is uh, uh, first half very strong growth in FI24, Q3 it slowed down and Q4 it slowed down significantly for the entire sector I understand that. But is the size now becoming an issue because uh, FI23, 60% growth, FI24, second half significant slowdown. Is size also an issue now given the kind of growth you have seen earlier? So, so let me answer it in two, three ways. Abnish, I think size we are far, far, far from where we will say that we become sizable enough that growth rates will slow down. Both the category growth of packaged beverages in India as well as the opportunity for us to address that remains significant enough. The big brands in the portfolio which are growing are Tata Copper Plus and uh, uh, Tata Gluco Plus. Tata Copper Plus is seasonal but not as seasonal as Tata Gluco Plus and Tata Gluco Plus which is the higher revenue or higher margin uh, product is what did not fire as well as we thought it would because of the delayed onset of summer. In terms of the outlet base, we are now about 900, 950,000 outlets which is a significant uh, how do I say this? We are significantly behind the rest of the competitors, the large competitors if you look at it. So we have got still a significant portion to run and we remain confident that we will continue to deliver this growth numbers uh, that we talked about. We uh, Till uh, January we were very very confident of hitting the 900 to uh, 1000. Unfortunately I would say second half of February, March was uh, a little bit of a dampener. But nothing has changed on the basics of the business, so we remain extremely confident. Sure, thanks. Uh, that's all from me. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Jay Doshi from Kotak. Please go ahead. Yeah. Hi, uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, first question is a bookkeeping question on uh, you know, Capital Foods in Organic India. What will be the aggregate amortization charge for both the entities and uh, depreciation as well? And what is, uh, you know, the ballpark EBITDA that you are uh, sort of uh, building for FI26, uh, you know, for the EPS neutral math? So, Jay, in terms of uh, capital foods, is going to be around 160 crores per year. Organic India, we've just closed, as Sunil said, on 16th of April, and we're still working through the financials in PPA. I think we'll be able to convey that number later. Um, for, on forward uh, looking a bit, I think I will refrain from giving a guidance at this stage. But essentially what we have said is uh, both these businesses uh, will be cash accretive right from this year and uh, EPS overall uh, accounting accretive starting next year. 
FI 26. Uh, will it be uh, EPS accretive or EPS neutral? And is this after factoring in amortization charges? So after factoring in amortization uh, charges, Jay, the way we have built the business case, and if we deliver on that, then of course by year three, we're likely to become overall accretive. All right, FI 27. Yeah, FI 27. Correct. Uh, uh, thank, uh, thanks. And a couple of more questions around uh, profitability. First of all, thanks for the disclosures on uh, you know, uh, profitability movement for different businesses. Now, from next year perspective, what is the outlook on profitability for the international business? And I'm talking about the branded international branded business. We understand the volatility non-branded. And second is, uh, what about the synergies uh, for Tata Coffee? Uh, at the time of you know, a consolidation merger announcement, you had indicated some uh, cost savings and other synergies. So are you still on track or expecting those to materialize? And if you could quantify for that for it, us again. Uh, so uh, let, me, let me take that question. A, uh, we, had, we had always maintained that the international EBIT margins should be accretive to the total India portfolio. <laughs> And starting this quarter, given the UK uh, turn strong turnaround, I would say, A, and B, the continued delivery of Canada and the improvement in the US. US, we still got work to do. Uh, we expect uh, international to continue to be accretive on EBIT margins uh, going forward, A. B, overall, as a company, I think we've said uh, EBITDA margins, we've delivered 15.3 uh, uh, for whole of last year. Last quarter was 16.1. but. We will be uh, improving of the 15.3 number as we uh, go forward. And uh, sorry, on the Tata Coffee merger, uh, yes, uh, we have started realizing the synergies. The integrated uh, organization has already uh, got announced. And therefore, from a cost perspective, we have seen the synergies coming in. In terms of revenue synergies, early signs, they were top line synergies as well as we put both the teams together. Uh, complementary geographies, complementary products uh, coming together. Uh, we have started seeing early signs of those synergies uh, coming in and do, we do expect to deliver on those commitments. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, I'll get back in the queue. Thanks a lot. Uh -huh. And good luck for FI25. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Mihir from Nomura. Please go ahead. Hi, so good morning. Thank you for taking my question. Um, uh, so my first question on the tea business, on the tea volumes, how should one uh, think about the tea volumes uh, for the coming year? In fourth quarter, volumes became flat. No sooner the base volumes came back to positive trajectory. Uh, you know, and that trend will continue. So can volumes in uh, tea business languish in FI25 uh, or steps are being taken uh, you know, to curtail uh, market share losses? Uh, so A, I'll react first to the market share question. As I mentioned, uh, we don't expect that the industry grew by 7% last quarter as reported by Nielsen and therefore we would wait for competitive data to come out before making a judgment on that. That's number one. Number two, long term we do expect the India tea business volumes to be about a 5% growth and a couple of points on that uh, on our price mix uh, and uh, uh, revenue growth management uh, numbers. Uh, yes, this quarter was a bit soft compared to uh, what we were seeing as a trend because we had seen volumes coming to a 2 to 3 percent volume growth. Uh, we do expect to see uh, at least a 3 percent, 2 to 4 percent uh, growth, volume growth numbers, at least in the short term. But in the medium to long term, we do expect it to come back to a mid single digit uh, volume growth. Understood, sir. So my second question is on uh, the coffee soluble business. Uh, what is the steady state margin, you know, for this business? And given this 22 odd percent margin is driven by price increases, um, can these margins sustain for some more quarters till it gets anniversarized, or how should one look at the margins for the, the uh, this business uh, at least for the coming uh, few quarters of the for the year? So again, uh, I would separate out the non-branded margins into two different pieces. There is a coffee solubles and there is a plantation uh, business. Uh, coffee solubles is a pass-through, uh, largely a pass-through number. Uh, th there might be differences in margins b between timing of uh, buying of inventory and selling of inventory because remember we are buying coffee from various parts of the world, converting it to extracts or solubles and selling it onwards. 
So, so there is an input price also differential, whereas in the plantations, we get the upside of the entire coffee uh, pricing going up. It will remain volatile for some time. We had seen a, a, a sort of a plateauing of that over the past three quarters. But in Q4, again, we've seen Robusta starting to jump up and in tandem, then Arabica jumping up. Uh, we would say we would expect volatility at least in the short term on this piece, but we will have to manage the numbers. Now, just as a perspective, overall, the non-branded business is just about 10% of our uh, total India revenue. So from that perspective, it is not as significant, uh, but we would expect some road bumps at least in the short term. Thank you, sir. We'll take the next question from the line of Sheila Rati from Morgan Stanley. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for taking my question. Uh, my first question again was on coffee business. So Sunil, if you would like to call out, you know, what kind of uh, distribution innovation plan uh, we have uh, with respect to, you know, taking up our coffee uh, branded business higher from where we are today? So uh, l l let me say we've got significant uh, uh, opportunity out there. Uh, I I'll, I'll point back to one of the reasons why now we've done a split routes at the front end is primarily because that was becoming the blockage for us to expand our portfolio and expand different SKUs. Uh, coffee did grow 29% for the year and 45% for the quarter, but I think we're still scratching the surface. We've still got a significant amount of uh, runway out there. This year, that remains a focus, especially with A, the innovations that we have planned, B, the amount of media spend that we are putting behind it, and C, between the enabling infrastructure that has been put into place. And what kind of distribution the coffee business would have currently versus CRT business, and if there is any difference here uh, in terms of B2B or B2C strategy? So it's primarily a B2C strategy. We are significantly behind. I, I think we've got still way to go. In the southern markets is where we had initially focused. There the gaps are they're still large, but relatively smaller compared to the rest of the country. Uh, we've still got, uh, we're we are not there by a mile. Thank you, sir. We'll take the next question from the line of Parsi Pantaki from IIFL Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. So in the standalone, we've seen uh, some kind of a margin contraction this time. I believe it's because of uh, uh, a higher ad spend, uh, which is purely a phasing issue. So can you just try and quantify that for us? Uh, what is the increase in uh, ad spend on a YOI basis as a percentage of uh, sales so that we can get a better idea of the underlying uh, profit growth for the standalone business? Thanks. So firstly, hi, thanks for the question. It's, uh, we have stepped up our ANP as Sunil mentioned earlier. It's almost a 100 basis point increase over last year. So that, I think that's one reason uh, for a bit of a, uh, you know, underlying uh, numbers on the EBITDA on standalone. The second, of course, is uh, the capital foods, uh, which has a marginal impact. Uh, as the full synergy benefits come through, we will see this improve. But Capital Foods is not in the standalone, no, it's in the subsidiary, right? Part of it is in uh, the standalone as well. But I think bulk of it is attributed to the ANP increase, which is almost 35% growth versus last year, as I said, 100 basis point of food. Understood, understood. Secondly, just wanted to understand on Narishko, what is the total distribution reach that you have right now, and how does that compare to the universe? Uh, so the total distribution reach last year was about 650,000 outlets, which we improved to 950,000 this year. Uh, so that's about a 50% increase. But I would say we probably index, if I take an index to what the universe uh, is there, we are probably at a, maybe a 15-20% of the universe. Uh, see, long way to go. Understood, understood. And uh, uh, you are growing so rapidly, so are you really just taking market share from the very small unorganized tail brands or uh, is it also some amount of market share gain from uh, the larger brands in the, the package drinking water space? So our portfolio is completely different from the big boys, right? 
I would say in the package drinking water, which is Tata Copper Plus, and I'm just taking a, there will be a significant amount of market share that we would be taking from other players as well as taking off from organized players, but the larger, unorganized players, sorry. But the larger portion, I would say, is probably coming in from the uh, branded players, right? Now we are the number five water brand uh, now in India. Uh, Tata Gluco Plus is a cup which is a completely differentiated format. I'm not sure uh, we are taking away from the big boys. There is enough uh, uh, category expansion out there given per capita consumption uh, that we are driving for. And Tata Gluco Plus would be approximately what percentage of your Nourishco turnover? It would roughly be about 40% of uh, the total Nourishco turnover. 60% would be Tata Copper Plus. Okay, sir. Okay, that's all for me. Thanks and all the best. Thank you. A reminder to all the participants to kindly limit their questions to two per participant. We'll take the next question from the line of Arnab Mitra from Goldman Sachs. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, my first question again was on the international margins. So, so we've seen a big step up in the fourth quarter compared to even the last two quarters. Was there anything specific this quarter which additionally led to a margin expansion or this is the full benefit of the changes you've done? And a related question is this coffee inflation last time did hurt your U.S. margins. Uh, do you anticipate any pressure given the current trend from the coffee prices? So, so let, me, let me answer your second question first. I think last time around we were, uh, what's the right term? We were a bit slow on the reaction because we had not expected the pricing to move as fast as it did when coffee prices came down and uh, our reaction time on the shop floor and converting it into promotions was a bit slower than competitors and therefore it was a double whammy. I mean volumes were soft and uh, uh, we did not get the throughputs. This time around we've been very agile because we saw, saw this coming slightly early in the day and therefore we moved in line with coffee prices. So. I would not, while absolutes might move up and down uh, because of the softness on the total top line uh, with the price increases that we are now seeing uh, coming in back into the market, uh, margin terms I don't think uh, there will be too much of an impact. If anything, we should expect an improvement. That's number one. Uh, what, what was the first question? Sorry. It was the 15, the margin itself. Oh, okay. So, so, so uh, on the international business, couple of things. We had kicked off our international restructuring last year in the same quarter, right? So, this year we are seeing the full benefits of the entire, and when I am talking of restructuring, it's not the, not the legal entities restructuring, the cost restructuring in the international business. So, we are seeing the full benefits of that flowing in, that's number one. Number two, last year about this time was when we started uh, how do I say, uh, revamping our entire uh, product slash brand proposition in, especially in the UK, uh, where we put in 10% assans into the tea, brought it up to par, changed our entire packaging, make it, made it sustainable, changed our execution dynamics uh, and uh, went for proper distribution and execution in a heightened manner. Uh, we are seeing the benefits of all that flow in, plus because now we have got a st stronger proposition in the market, we have also started to take price increases to put us on par and not at a discount to all the competitors in the market. We have taken some pricing again this year and we are seeing uh, uh, our maintaining of market share despite all the pricing that they were taken. That's number one. Number two is uh, also uh, remember the fruit and herbal and specialties are A, the growing parts of the market, also the better margin parts of the market. That part of the portfolio is also getting ramped up between Good Earth and T-Pigs. We are now up to a 10% share in the UK. So all multiple pieces flowing in, uh, we do expect to see, uh, as I said, the international margins uh, right now are about 200 to 300 bips better than uh, our India businesses, overall businesses. We do expect to see that accretiveness to continue. Sure, uh, Sunil. My last question is on salt. So, uh, you know, you have had a huge margin ex uh, market share expansion. Uh, and now, from here on, is the pace of expansion going to be a lot more modest, given that the distribution leg has already played in, and given that the category itself doesn't grow much, uh, does it mean we should expect less than mid-single-digit volume growth now in salt going ahead? 
So, so let me put it this way, if I rewind about 18, 18, 20 months back was when we took our significant price increases, which was roughly around 30%. At that point of time, our value market, our overall market share was primarily driven by value and not by volume, because we put our margins on track and uh, uh, continue to execute. Right now, our uh, growth is driven by volume and not as much volume, because you've not taken pricing at least for the last, I think, uh, 15 to 18 months, if I'm not mistaken. So right now it is a pure distribution expansion, uh, portfolio expansion. Now value added salts are now 9% of my portfolio versus when we started with the merger four years back, it was about a, less than a percent out there. So value added salt, volume growth, distribution expansion. You would have seen the recent IPL opening day uh, Tata Namak advertisements. We're putting salience uh, behind it. So we remain confident of continued growth in market share. I do not see a, a reason for us to slow it down significantly. Thanks so much. All the best. Thank you. We'll take the next question from Rohan Kale from Incred Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, thanks sir, for the opportunity. Uh, just wanted to uh, check on the non-branded non uh, business margins. Uh, so I'm assuming you've got uh, strong gains uh, on lower price inventory of coffee. So just want to understand how much of this inventory do we have left? Uh, assuming now you will be procuring at uh, current market prices, how should we look at these margins here sustainably, at least in the near term? And uh, second uh -huh. question on uh, the asset write downs that are mentioned in the exceptional items. Just want to understand what the uh, uh, rupee 620 million uh, asset write down was. Uh, so, so let me take the first one and I ask Ashish to take the second piece. Uh, like I said, the unbranded business is in two pieces. There is a largely a flow through with a delayed uh, impact of either up or down on uh, coffee prices uh, in the solubles business because we buy coffee, convert it into solubles slash extractions and they then sell it off. Uh, on the coffee plantations, there is a straight uh, uh, revenue uplift which increases margins. Right now, uh, we are seeing prices going up and therefore uh, uh, there is a uh, benefit for the coffee plantations more than solubles. On the solubles business, we do not expect too much movement because of uh, prices going up and down. Ashish? Yeah, on the second bit, uh, as I was explaining earlier, this is largely as part of the annual review process where we look at all assets and uh, across various parts of business looking at the capacity utilization, uh, on a more prudence basis we have taken provision on some of these assets. Understood, sir. Thank you. I'll get back with you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, I would request uh, Ms. Nidhi Verma to kindly proceed with the next question on the webcast. Over to you, ma'am. Sure, thank you. Uh, so there are a few questions on the webcast link. There are more uh, than 20 parties in the conference. Okay, I'll just read those questions out. Uh, the first question is from Kajol. She's asking, can you please provide some more light on the subdued performance of Starbucks during the quarter? And uh, yeah, we've already talked yes, about we've already answered that during the opening remarks, Kajal. There is another question from Nikhil. How long will it take for it to complete the integration of acquisitions? And when can we expect margin expansion based on these acquisitions? Yeah, so we've always, always decided for a 100-day integration. We remain on track for, uh, so Capital Foods, we acquired uh, February 1st. Uh, so by April end, we will uh, complete the acquisition. Like I said, 95% of our front-end distributors are already billing Capital Foods and we are on our way. So uh, we will complete Capital Foods in 100 days. Organic India was 16th April. We will complete it in 100 days and post that you will start to see margin expansion coming in. Yeah, thank you. There is a question from Ashish Kumar. He's asking, is there any updates on the rights issue and any timeline? So, Kesha, we are on track on the rights issue. I, uh, the process is on, and I think we should be able to conclude it by early quarter two. Thank you, Ashish. Uh, there is a question from Jigar. He's asking, what is the reason of profit decline even though revenue has grown? So, I think this has been explained enough, Jigar. Uh, it's uh, led by exceptional charges, net of that the profit has actually grown 
42 percent as you have seen. Uh, there is a question from Summer. He is asking, can you give some color of the business of Starbucks again in terms of its revenue and earnings to overall business? So just I think you are asking about the accounting treatment, its share of... So, so Starbucks is not accounted for in our consolidated. We consolidate it as uh, part of associates and JVs. Uh, 1200 plus crores of uh, top line which has grown at 7% uh, for the quarter. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, that's pretty much it from the webcast. Uh, oh, oh, sorry, there's an answer. Is there are any plans on entering the BPC segment? Uh, so, like I said, uh, we've always said that we want to be a total FMCG company. Right now we are focused on being a food and beverage company. I think we have shown our intent very clearly to grow organically and inorganically. We do think there is still a runway left there. Once we think we have exhausted the runway out here and we see a bigger opportunity in moving beyond food and beverage, we will definitely look at that. Okay, and I think there is another housekeeping question from Neera. She is asking, is the decline in India business EBIT margin, like what is leading to that? Uh, why is it declining from 15.5% to 12.9%? That's his question. It is led by the amortization charge here. Yeah. Amortization of capital foods. Yeah. Okay, and there is one question uh, asking what would be the growth strategy for Tata Sampan moving forward? So Tata Sampan, we very clearly said that we want to be a total pantry brand. We have identified very clearly the categories that we want to play in Tata Sampan. Uh, right now we are in pulses, spices uh, and a variety of other pantry products. Uh, as we gain scale uh, and improve both our brand strength and therefore pricing power and our back-end procurement, we continue to improve margins on Sampan. Uh, there is a question from Sachin asking, when you say growth businesses will be 30% of consolidated revenue, does it also include capital foods and organic India? Yes, uh, we have, we said before we did this integration, uh, we did this acquisitions, we had said uh, we expect uh, growth businesses to account for 20% of our top line and growing at 30%. Uh, just as a this thing, last quarter we grew at uh, 18. Uh, going forward with Capital India, Capital Foods and Organic India, we expect growth businesses in India to be 30% of our portfolio growing at uh, 30%. Thank you. Thank you, Sunil. I think we have covered most of the questions, actually all of the questions on the webcast now. Um, so yeah, with that I think uh, there are no further questions in the Q&A queue as well. Uh, I would just like to take this opportunity to thank you all for joining the call. If you do have any remaining questions, please feel free to get in touch with us. Thank you. Thank you very much, ma'am. Thank you, members of the management. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of ICICI Securities, that concludes this conference. We thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines. Thank you.